We are in the amidst of uh, media and the information revolution. Media presence we have seen in the uh, couple of uh, presentation and last two weeks time. The media presence, information penetration, the role of audience and the role of audience in the new technology. Large level of our exposure to the media and information is shaping and molding our knowledge and opinion system and even particularly our way of life. And this kind of new normal media environment, it's quite required for individuals and many institutions, particularly for individual members of the society, to tackle the media and the information presence. And there's a large growing influence of social media in the current scenario, particularly influential disinformation and information. Popularly, these are called fake news. These kind of misinformation, uh, disinformations are being organized as well as a lot of viral campaigns are being carried out with, with a kind of certain atten with agenda with a certain motive towards certain goals. And in this context, the role of and media information literacy becomes a life support kind of skills in the contemporary social scenario. The earlier slides, earlier presentations and the earlier study materials, you might have come across the definitions of media information literacy, the growth of media information literacy in the Indian context and how best Media information literacy can play a role in sustainable development goals. Because in this course, we are trying to understand the relationship between individual contribution along with the media environment to achieve 2030 target and goals of sustainable development goals. Individual, individuals with a, uh, with a proper communication technological support can be part of the communication system that can reach the wider audience. The individual can give a voice to voiceless. The media and information may not be able to provide the role, may not be able to provide the water, may not be able to provide the infra city infrastructure. But the information can play a role, can supplement the awareness, it create a kind of environment in which individual can play a role, active role, be part of the national building. Because Compared to Millennium Development Goals, it was tar targeted towards institutions' role in achieving human standards. In a Sustainable Development Goals, seeking participation of every member of the society, be a government, public sector, private sector and individuals. Since with the advent of communication information technology, individuals can play a role. So in this context only, the media information literacy plays play an important role of creating awareness among the individuals how to handle the media information system for betterment of the society. And this is a context because we have uh, uh, plenty of media and information presence. And with the, with the reduced or lack of ethical values or responsibilities to the social order among the institutionalized media and information providers and user generated content generators the whole media ecology intends to create a havoc in certain quarters. Not everybody is playing this kind of massive role, but certain quarters, certain players deliberately playing a role, individuals, a group of individuals, a small group, you misusing the media ecology to create a havoc in the society. So in this context, the media information literacy plays a crucial role in that. The common media users, be it a mainstream media or online digital platform, they have two level of strategies while accessing, handling, understanding, utilizing and participating in the media information system. One, to be fully aware about the institutionalized media and information providers intention, motive, agenda, frame and factors while packaging their delivery. Because Every communication provider, every information provider, they provide the messages, they provide the information with a certain intention, with a certain motives. As an audience, as a user, as a reader, as a listener, 
we have to be more careful fully aware about their intention their motive their agenda if we come to know about the agenda it's easy for us to resist the the pressure comes to us to mold our opinion and secondly to ability to tackle the onslaught of organized and viral campaigns one from the institutional push towards the uh, societies to the individual members we have to be very careful about the the intention of the media providers information providers secondly to tackle the 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 viral campaigns to sp spread the misinformation and disinformation this is a one level of handling the media information second part is how to handle it in a better way for that we need proper competency and skill sets to utilize the media platform particularly technology enabled media platform of the best example is ict enabled digital media so these are the uh, some of the strategies the common media uses to handle in the current scenario many big and me information providers me big, many big media and information providers and players are already in the uh, training level they started providing media education digital literacy training to many section of the society particularly to tackle the fake news and many efforts are being taken by the public sector and private sec private sector institution to provide digital literacy computer literacy information literacy which are aims to familiarize the hardware and software dimension of computing and mobile devices all these efforts literacy efforts be it the technology companies or media companies or government or public sector institutions these literacy efforts need to be contextualized within the holistic approach of mil competency training framework because the uh, common users access understanding and participation is greatly enhanced compared to last 10 years 10 years earlier history earlier in the mainstream media provides very limited scope for the audience to participate we have to consume whatever is being given to us but now we have better environment for participating in the communication system from the top vertical communication to the horizontal and equal level of communication process in the contemporary media information literacy training special emphasis and high priority is being given to the media and information training for marginalized and disadvantaged people this is being continuously repeated in multiple national international policies media and Uh, information policies you will come across this point in the next week media policy presentation as well as the literature because the marginalized and disadvantaged people have difficulty to access one due to affordability a lack of competency lack of skills special provisions needs to be created either by the public sector private sector and the media companies or individuals to facilitate this people comes from the marginalized vulnerable section to utilize the media information system for their betterment in if you look at the global level the media education training and intervention across the global scenarios is being uneven not equally standardized there are many reasons there for that in certain countries there is a advanced level of training standards particularly in the europe north america and australia the reason is the last 2 3 decades right from the day the television and print media took a larger role to play in the society they started educating the younger audience through the school education to empower the people how to handle the media in certain countries ml policy media information literacy policy is not in a structured format there's a lack of clarity on implementation though they have a system they have educational understanding there's a need people are willing to train them but lack of textbook lack of training lack of lack of policy that's prevented them to go into further into training the the needy people the third level is country lacks ml policy altogether there is a uh, no discussion no policy document no ground work has been created to provide the basic media education platform so if we look at the global scenario 
there are three levels of training standards being practiced across the continents. Advanced level, unstructured, lack of clarity in certain countries and no MIL policy all, at all at any, many countries level. So three, the three levels of media training is happening. In this background, this presentation, we are going to trace the historical development of global agenda on providing media and information training in different segments. How the media education got introduced, what is the significance of media education in the social context and how it got related with the development of new media platforms actually started with the 1982 uh, media education declaration happened in a German city, Grunwald. Then 1990 in France about new directions of media education. Then 1999 is about educating for the media and digital age in Vienna. In 2003, it's a break uh, uh, declaration uh, towards an information literacy society. Then 2005, information literacy and lifelong learning declaration. In 2011, then again the media literacy recommendation emphasized the lifelong learning and information literacy. In 2012, Moscow declaration and 2014, Paris declaration were specifically talking about media literacy in the digital era. If you look at the whole historical background 1980 to 2014, the entire uh, global agenda or global focus, global discussion on media education focused towards the development of media platform and parallelly media education system. 1982 declaration talked about the importance of television and print media. Then 1919 talked about uh, uh, the start. 1919 the Vena declaration talked about the introduction of ICT based uh, media platform in the Moscow and Paris declaration completely talking about how ICT enabled medium and the mainstream medium needs to be tackled, needs to be streamlined in the media education system. We will take up the individual uh, declaration. These uh, are historical development. It, the, this, de this declaration, understanding this declaration will help you to figure out the growth of media information literacy over the last 30 years, 30, 35 years of history of media information literacy. This will give a better understanding of handling the, the media information literacy topic of week three. In a Grunwald declaration on media education 1982, it talked about, it, it gave emphasis on developing knowledge, skills, attitudes, which will encourage the growth of critical awareness and consequently greater competency among the users of electronic media and print media. In 1982, if you look at the period 1982, it was a period of television and print media. Even in Indian context, we got a color television, we got a magazine boom around that time. The massive growth of television, massive growth of magazines happened that period of time 1982. That exactly matching with the media education, that's a historically look at that. UNESCO supported this media education declaration. It's a starting point of the, the media information literacy stream. And it started uh, focusing that there is a growth, there is an importance of electronic and print media. This needs to be handled in a better way. The school and the family system share a lot of responsibility of preparing young persons for living in the world of powerful images, words and sounds. These three are very crucial in molding somebody's opinion and knowledge system. Children, particularly young adults, need to know, need to have a, a knowledge, need to know the literacy of how to handle these three powerful media elements, images, words and sounds. These are symbolic system. These three represent symbolic system and in order to train the children and young adults, yeah, uh, yeah, steps is required, some kind of reassessment of educational priorities needed. That was the uh, uh, understanding in 1982 to tackle the television and print media influence in the society. The children and young adults need to know the literacy, need to know the knowledge, need to know, uh, need to know the competency 
to tackle the role of images, role of words, role of sounds. So that they suggest that the declaration suggested that the educational reassessment in terms of integrating integrated approach to teach the language and communication in the school curriculum. That was a major recommendation in 1982. And they recommended that a comprehensive media education program has to be initiated in a younger level, those uh, age group that falls under children and young adults. In order to introduce a comprehensive media education system to tackle the television and print media, the proper training courses for the teacher needs to be identified. Because in order to teach the students, we need a kind of uh, train the train, trainers. The teacher has to be primarily trained. That was the felt need in 1982. We have to re rearrange the educational priorities. We have to train the young and uh, young adults and to, through comprehensive media education program. In order to facilitate the comprehensive media education system, we need the trainers. The teachers are the potential play, main players. So first priority is to introduce a program and train the teachers. And also parallelly, the uh, importance of television, importance of print media, importance of three powerful elements, images, text and sound needs to be analyzed, needs to be researched from multiple perspectives. This is another rec recommendation from 1982 declaration from multiple media stream, multiple uh, academic streams from psychology, from sociology, from communication science. So in order to understand the holistic influence of media, particularly television and print media. So 1982 started the major re recommendation of reassessing the educational priorities by introducing comprehensive media education program and facilitated by this training program facilitated by the trained teachers. Then came 1990 uh, France uh, declaration that talks about new directions in the media education. In 1982, they put the foundation, foundation to reassess the educational priorities. In eight years after that, 1990, new uh, uh, international committee co was convened with the help of UNESCO to identify the new direction in media. Because by the eight years time, in the uh, Europe, in the Australia, uh, in the countries in the Europe and Australia started uh, tremendous uh, efforts, initiated the tremendous efforts to introduce a media education in a multiple level of secondary and tertiary education level. So by the time, uh, eight years of uh, experience, they wanted to know the, the situation and they wanted to take it forward to the next level. So that was the main reason behind this 1990 France declaration on new directions in media education. Particularly talking about uh, this uh, declaration of 1990, talked about creating a new curriculum guidelines. In 1982, it emphasized that the educational reassessment, providing comprehensive media education program. In eight years of multiple experiences, in 1990, they felt that a kind of guideline, curriculum guideline, there's no curriculum framework, it's a curriculum guideline, nationally or regionally, that will help the education institutions to standardize the training. That was a major recommendation of 1990. And the, and the second recommendation is about teacher training programs. As it was emphasized in 1982, the media education training can be provided to the large chunk of child and young adults through the school education, through the teachers. In order to take it further, the, the curriculum guideline needs to be identified and we need, the, the discipline needs a demarcated, clear-cut teacher training programs, standardized teacher training programs in the university level. This is not a degree program in journalism or broadcasting or media department. The declaration specifically said that the degree program should be placed in the educational department with a specific specialization or major in media studies, training the te teachers within the context of educational condition, educational environment, 
the declaration not recommended the degree in journalism, rather they recommended a degree program in the educational background specialized in media studies. Curriculum guideline and a comprehensive teacher training program. And along with this curriculum and teacher training program, and they recommended teacher support to uh, support to the in-service educational program, summer training courses, national uh, seminars, conferences, in order to exchange the experience among the stakeholders. And providing the fourth recommendation is providing educational resources for teachers. Curriculum guideline and proper uh, framework uh, training, university level training and uh, uh, teacher support, networking support and the fourth one is to provide educational resources, writing and uh, publishing uh, textbook, lesson plans, activity sheets, video and other audio video materials to support the comprehensive media education program in the educational settings. The next major uh, achievement happened in the media information literacy, the growth of media information literacy in a historical perspective. 1982, the first declaration identified the reassessment. In 1990, with eight years of experience, they recommended new directions. In 1999, in Vienna, they made a declaration with the support of UNESCO under the broad headline of educating for the media and digital age. See the, distance, see the difference, the shift of focus from 1982 to 1999. 1982 talked about print and electronic media, particularly television. In 1999, it talked about educating for the media and digital age. 1995 only, the uh, World Wide Web was introduced and uh, it uh, because in uh, uh, capability for networking and interactivity, digital media had always a strong edge over the mainstream media. So that, with that background of uh, digital media uh, platform was introduced in, in the 1995. In 1999 meeting in Vienna talked about media literacy in the context of digital age. And they emphasized that. Media education is about teaching and learning with and about media rather than through media. So they had the media education training has to go along with the media practices. It involves the media training, involves critical analysis and creative participation, creative production. It can support, uh, the support and should take place in formal and informal settings. It promotes a sense a sense of community and social responsibility as well as individual self-fulfillment. In the uh, educating for the media and in digital age in, uh, of 1919 in declaration, it talked about media education can assist the citizen to recognize the potential of the media of their representation or misrepresentation because here with the help of new technology they can reassess. In case the, the particular culture, a particular social segment or community not represented or misrepresented, the audience can take a, a, a efforts to rectify that imbalance with the help of new technology. That was the recommendation from 1999 because this understand the, the role of new technology in those period. And particularly second recommendation talk about media education should be aimed at empowering, empowering all citizens of every society, it talked about inclusive society. Because the ICT, uh, information technology based medium started invading the society. Since it's technology based, it needs competency and skill set and it's not easily affordable and created a kind of digital divide. So then 1999, the declaration recommended that the Media education should take care about empowering all the citizens of every segment of the society. In 2003, it talked about information literacy society. Information literacy society in the sense, with the help of new media technology, with the help of internet, a user or audience can extract information from any available online resources extracting, handling, storing, retrieving information or the skill sets associated with the information society. This uh, uh, the skill sets require for an individual throughout the life. So in this 2003, 
Prague uh, Declaration, they declared that the information literacy has to be incorporated in the educational settings. Not only school education should be in the lifelong learning settings because that enables individuals to carry forward the skill set throughout the life setting. So there is a shift in media education, media information literacy towards information handling, information storing and participating in the information sector and, and training extended beyond the school education to the lifelong settings. Next major development happened in 2005 and 2011. In the two uh, uh, major uh, international meet recommended and stressed the need for information literacy in the context of new media and information technology. They again again re re reiterated that the lifelong learning has to be incorporated with the media information literacy training. In 1982 and 1990, 1999 talked about reassessment of school education meant for young and children, young adults. But in the later stage in 2005 and 2011, media information literacy declaration supported the lifelong learning and more emphasis given on information literacy due to the advent of information technology and introduction of digital media platform in the society. In 2012 and 2014 declaration, 2012 is about Paris and 2012 is Moscow and 2014 is about Paris declaration on media information literacy in digital era. Particularly in the Paris declaration talked about addressing the issues of access, privacy, safety and security of individuals dealing with information, information media and technology in line with the human rights standards. And uh, uh, another major recommendation from Paris Declaration, that's uh, 2014, many countries have got a large chunk of internet users. So the media information literacy primarily talked about handling the media information system. So within the context, we talked about privacy, access, safety and security and advanced content creation using the multiple media elements. Major another recommendation came from personal and professional lifelong development with regard to handling the media information system. The lifelong learning and information literacy is being reiterated in the multiple international declarations. And uh, the media literacy curriculum has to be standardized. A kind of quality improvements needs to be introduced in the schools and lifelong learning context. And to promote the information literacy, people with the special needs. And this is being regularly repeated in multiple uh, international meet. The marginalized and vulnerable section usually neglected in every part of the social life. The special care has to be taken taken by the education institutions or government departments or public sector initiatives while dealing with the media information training. The special provision has to be given to the, the special needs, particularly indigenous people, people in the marginalized and vulnerable sections. In the whole presentation, we talked about the, the growth of media education, media training, information literacy over the period of time starting from 1982 talked about how to handle the television and print media. In 1999 introduced a digital era, how to dealing with the information literacy in 2003 and 2005 with the advent of information technology 2011 and 2014 declaration talked about more participation, safety, security and content creation, more specific in, uh, information, more specific importance being given to the vulnerable and marginalized sections of society. Thank you.